Julian Assange of WikiLeaks says that shadowy figures tied to Queen Elizabeth are rigging elections. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange says shadowy figures connected to Her Majesty are using dirty tricks in order to rig elections. Cambridge Alenica's parent company Strategic Communication Laboratories, or SCL Group, has deep ties to the British Conservative Party. The military establishment, the House of Lords, defense contractors, and the royal family. According to Julian Assange, this company has engaged in a number of dirty tricks in order to rig elections at home and abroad. Quote, we finally have the most concrete evidence yet of shadowy actors using dirty tricks in order to rig elections. But these characters aren't operating from Moscow. Instead, they are British, Eton educated and have close ties to Her Majesty. According to this report, Cambridge Analytica is a mere offshoot of strategic communication laboratories, as stated before, an organization with its roots deeply embedded within the British political, military, and royal establishment. Indeed, as the Observer article which broke the scandal said, for all intents and purposes, SCL Cambridge Analytica are one and the same. Like Cambridge and Analytica, SCL Group is behavioral science research and strategic communications company. In 2005, SCL went public with a glitzy exhibit at the DSEI conference, the UK's largest showcase for military technology. Its hard sell was a demonstration of how the UK government could use a sophisticated media campaign of mass deception to fool the British people into thinking an accident at a chemical plant had occurred and threatened central London. Board members include an array of lords, Tory donors, ex-British army officers, and defense contractors. This is the scandal that cuts to the heart of the British establishment. These organizations have boasted that it has conducted behavioral change programs in over 60 countries, and its clients have included the British Ministry of Defense and the U.S. State Department and NATO. A Freedom of Information request from August 2016 shows that the MOD has twice bought services from strategic communication laboratories in recent years. In addition, the SCL also carries a secret clearance as a List X contractor for the MOD. A List X site is a commercial site on British soil that is approved to hold UK government information marked as confidential and above. Essentially, the SCL got the green light to hold British government secrets on its promises. Meanwhile, the US State Department has a contract for half a million dollars with SCL. According to an official, this was uh, to provide research and analytical support in connection with our mission to counter terrorist propaganda and disinformation overseas. This was not the only work that SCL has been contracted for with the U.S. government, the sources added. In May of 2015, the SCL Defense, another subsidiary of the Umbrella Organization, received $1 million to support NATO operations in Eastern Europe targeting Russia. In conclusion, SCL's links to the Conservative Party in Britain continues through the company's chairman and venture capitalist Julian Wheatland. He also happens to be chairman of Oxshire Conservative Association. The organization has also been funded by Jonathan Marland, who is the former Conservative Party treasurer, a trade envoy under David Cameron, and a close friend of Tory election strategist Linton Crosby. Property tycoon and Conservative Party donor Vincent Tengzingu was also the single largest SCL shareholder for a decade. Meanwhile, another director is Gavin McNichol, founder of counterterrorism Eden intelligence firm who ran a G8 Plus meeting on financial intelligence cooperation at the behest of the British government. The aforementioned examples barely scrape the surface of just how deep the ties go between the UK defense establishment and strategic communication laboratories. 
Indeed, it seems evident that the organization is a product of murky alliances formed between venture capitalists and former British military and intelligence officers. Unsurprisingly, they also happen to be closely tied to the higher echelons of the Conservative Party. International deception and meddling is the name of the game for SCL. We finally have the most concrete evidence yet of shadowy actors using dirty tricks in order to rig elections, but these characters aren't operating from Moscow intelligence bunkers. Instead, they are British, Eton educated, headquartered in the city of London, and have close ties to Her Majesty's government. A tensely worded new foreign intelligence service report circulating in the Kremlin today states that within hours of elite Russian forces obliterating the CIA base in Syria, behind a plot to assassinate President Trump, WikiLeaks leader Julian Assange posted to his Twitter account the long-awaited, quote, Marshall attack, unquote, message signaling his acceptance of Trump's terms. And that has now left the entire world holding its breath in fear as to how the American shadow government or deep state will respond. According to this article and report, Julian Assange is a long-time known U.S. intelligence operative whose WikiLeaks whistleblowing website is a CIA-created and operated deep cover organization that had split with the deep state and whose factual war embroiled the 2016 U.S. presidential election by their releasing tens of thousands of Hillary Clinton and Democratic Party emails and who also, after Trump won, began releasing some of the CIA's most hidden secrets. In fearing that Julian Assange would begin posting further CIA secrets, this report details President Trump began planning to free him from his forced deep state confinement in London's Ecuadorian embassy, but with the plan eventually meeting failure when, on December 25th, the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence posted to the U.S. Navy Twitter account the words Julian Assange, thus signaling they were preparing at all costs to keep Trump from freeing Assange. In fearing that President Trump was going back on his word to free him after the U.S. of Naval uh, Official Intelligence posted their ominous December 25th twi Twitter account message, in fearing that President Trump was going back on his word to free him after the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence posted their Twitter message, Julian Assange, the warning tweet, this report continues that several days later, on January 1st, Julian Assange posted a cryptic tweet featuring a 60-character code along with a link to the music video Paper Planes, a code referring to a dead man's switch intended to trigger the release of documents in the event of his death, and who exactly the lyrics state, if you can catch me at the border, I got visas in my name, and I've got more records than the KGB, so uh, no funny business, unquote. In response to Julian Assange's January 1st warning, this report notes that President Trump on January 3rd shocked the deep state to its very core by releasing the bombshell news that he had just authorized his attorney to file a motion in U.S. federal court absolving Assange of committing any crimes against the United States and whose details about are in a motion filed with the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia on December 29, 2017 in the case of Roy Cockrum versus Donald J. Trump for president. Attorneys for President Trump argued that Julian Assange had a right under the First Amendment to publish the DNC and John Podesta emails, even if the emails were stolen. The case was orchestrated by Project Democracy, a group run by former attorneys from the Obama administration, arguing that then-former Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone had conspired with the Russians to publish the DNC and Podesta emails. In a 32-page motion defending the Trump campaign, Michael A. Carvin of the Jones Day Law Firm attorney of record representing President Trump, argued that the Trump campaign and by interference, Julian Assange at WikiLeaks 
could not be held liable under the First Amendment for a disclosure of stolen information if the information published deals with a matter of public interest and the speaker was not involved in the theft. In making the argument, Trump's attorneys relied upon Bartnicki v. Vooper, a 532 U.S. Code 514 of 2001, a labor union case in which the Supreme Court ruled a radio station had the right to broadcast a stolen tape of a phone call between the chief union negotiator of a Pennsylvania high school and the chief union negotiator together with the union president. Well, what does this all mean? With President Trump in his shocking U.S. federal court filing showing Julian Assange that he still intended to free him, this report continues by stating the next plan to accomplish this feat involved Ecuador granting Assange citizenship and democratic immunity, but that the deep state thwarted by getting London to say that they would not honor Assange's diplomatic immunity. Meanwhile, President Trump, as this report explains, didn't fear London as he knew that his official state car or U.S. presidential limousine is covered under the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations, whose diplomatic immunity includes not only embassies, but also diplomatic vehicles, houses, and offices, thus meaning that a U.S. official state car could enter into the Ecuadorian embassy compound in London, the sovereign territory, take a passenger like Assange diplomatic immunity, then transfer him to the sovereign U.S. territory of Air Force One, step from car to Air Force stairs, and also in which would entail Assange never having to step a foot upon U.K. or E.U. soil. This high-level transfer of Julian Assange to the United States, this report further details, was due to take place during President Trump's visit to London next week but that Trump had to abruptly cancel after Russia discovered the deep state was planning to assassinate him while he was there using bomb-laden combat UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles. The U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence and CIA were perfecting the deployment of in Syria, with Trump's false flag death then being blamed on radical Islam terrorists that would mostly assured ignited a World War III that the deep state desperately needs to cover up their soon-to-be-revealed crimes. With President Putin knowing full well that the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence and the CIA were planning, but who only publicly stated, we know who you are, this report continues. He ordered elite elements within the feared third guards of the brigade in Russia, the world's most efficient killers supposedly, to immediately deploy to Syria, and whom within 72 hours located the main CIA base these terrorists were using and obliterated it, killing all of its top commanders and destroying the combat UAV storage depot. Within hours of President Trump receiving confirmation that this ONI CIA base in Syria was destroyed, this report notes that further communications were made between the U.S. and Julian Assange and that Assange replied to by posting to his Twitter account a photograph containing a chessboard, unaccompanied by any text showing a move from the Casablanca vs. Marshall chess game of 1918, considered one of the greatest defensive games of all time in chess, known as the Marshall Attack, and promoting suggestions that Assange is preparing a checkmate. With the deep state becoming so desperate in their trying to keep the fake Trump-Russia collusion story alive that the CIA is now outrageously begging America's top music artists to flood their highly viewed social media accounts with these lies. This report concludes that the U.S. intelligence operative Julian Assange represents their gravest threat and is due to ha him having written and videotaped evidence proving that the late Democratic Party data analyst Seth Rich, not Russia, leaked all of the emails to WikiLeaks, and for which Rich was promptly murdered immediately after his meeting with the top aide of Democratic Party leader Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and that has the Democratic Party to this very day still refusing to release the leaks they have between Rich and WikiLeaks.
Ladies and gentlemen, subscribers, people watching this video, I don't know that I believe every bit of this report, but you know what? I can't make this stuff up. So I think that at least some of it has to be true because we are behind the eight ball and we have been for decades.